20 minutes. It was lovely to you. 17. We started again. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thank you for that. Okay, so that's our marking criteria. That's our assessment. I'd like to come back to the example because this is going to be your friend. So this person got a really high grade for their assessment. And the good thing about this is it's annotated and so it shows um, how they got what they did. And so if you've got a pen, write some notes in the side. Okay, so this was done for a film. So which also goes to show that it doesn't matter what the text is, how you approach a text, is what this is all about. Okay, so I know you're gonna do some more reading later on, but to recap, we've talked about the author as being the God, and we're all, we're all completely interested in how, um, in the author's purpose and the author's intention. To do that, we need to find out information about the author, and that's absolutely flawed because the author could be dead and you might not know him personally there might not be information on him you might you might not know so it's actually very difficult but back when there was only like 10 people who could actually write a novel it was a lot easier and they did have this very um, um, godlike status once they were published okay so that was the author the reader um, view is very much how I read something is different from how you read something. How I read something, when you pick up the book, what the author was thinking is not even a part of the equation. It is simply only about what I think as a reader. Um, okay, so it's just all about what I bring to the table, which is my experience, my age, my upbringing, it's the nature and nurture of me that I bring, and that's what the book is about. So I could say that and I could defend it. Okay, much like I do with that children's book. So that's the reader approach. If you were looking at a textual approach, you'd be looking at um, how um, Khaled Husseini tackles the, the dialogue, the dialogue within the text. There's quite a lot of dialogue. And it's significant because it shows, it gives you a personal feel. Dialogue in a novel um, makes you feel like you're getting to know these people, like they're real people. So it adds a sense of authenticity to the novel. And bearing in mind that it's an historical novel, even though the characters are fictitious, the fact that he's added this dialogue lends an element of authenticity to the characters, which then supports the authenticity of the um, facts within the text itself. You'd also look at the sort of punctuation he uses. Some of the paragraphs, particularly towards the end of the novel, become quite sh short and small, and there's moments when he's coming in and out of consciousness in hospital, and that is reflected in the format of the text and the paragraphing and the length of the sentences. So that is actually taking the text in its purest form breaking it down and analysing the text. That's what the text view is in a nutshell. Okay, the other way of looking at it is the world view way of looking at it. That's the one with all the isms in it. That's your feminism, that's your Marxism. So, um, and that is like political, religious, all of those broad connotations that um, affect or uh, go towards and contribute to the construction and the reading of a text. Um, and the worldview is quite commonly the, the approach that English teachers take in, in the schools in, in Australia, certainly. So you'll notice if you're doing Australian identity, you'll be looking at a range of different films and texts and poems and articles around the Australian culture which will give you a really wide view of the politics and the religions and the, the different views, male and female, of a very, very large um, topic. So that's, that's the sort of world view. But as I said, this particular assessment that you're doing, you're focused mainly on the reader and the author. So those are the two 
elements of the pool that you really need to be uh, more confident with. So let that be the focus of, of your reading. Okay, so that said, let's go and look at um, this assessment. Okay, so we already started going through it, didn't we, last week? Do you remember what part we got up to? I think the, we read it. It was together, just the, um, the first one. Introduction. Okay, so we just did the introduction. So you can see on here where there's ticks. So the marker, the teacher, when they ticked it, thought that's a good sentence. That's that's doing its job. That's doing the job really well. But it's only where you see the arrows that tells you where it matches up to the criteria, why it got the high grade it did. So the very first one where it says, discerning analysis of how different genre structures and textual features of self-selected film text support interpretation. So discerning analysis of genre structure. So I found Jeunet's depiction of the self-mutilation of five soldiers horrific. Okay, so right there, next to that place, put an asterisk like this and think about in the kite runner what part in the kite runner did you think whoa that made me sit up a certain depiction of something should we talk about the have you got your kite runner box with you Page is the right thing. So chapter it wasn't seven. That, that yeah, I wasn't that shocked. 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 Let's have a look at it. Mind you, a 21st century girl, aren't you? Do we know what page it was? I'll find it. Chapter seven. Chapter seven. Just like a mass of men that he's ending up. On page sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty six. That's afterwards. Okay, yeah. So page sixty six. Okay, so you'll notice. From um, at the top of the page, it begins with a havoc of scrap and rubble littered the val littered the alley. The one of the things you'll notice about the text of this book is it's very um, poetic. It's filled with a very rich imagery, and that's very key actually to the Afghani culture. So you can actually link that type of imagery writing to, to the culture if you wanted to. Worn bicycle tires, bottles and peeled labels, ripped up magazines, yellowed newspapers, all scattered amid a pile of bricks and slabs of cement. Okay, so he's setting the scene there. And just the, the sort of words that he's using, um, worn bicycle tires, bottles with peeled labels, ripped up magazines, yellow newspapers and the word slabs of cement it says scrap littered the alley those sorts of negative words in the initial description already depict a really dark negative setting because like he could have just described the litter and done it quite factually but he's done it with a real negative connotation so he's really setting the scene there so he's building up to a climax for, for the reader and to expect a real um, climax to it. Um, I don't know what he was saying. My father says it's sinful. So there's a lot of biblical connotations in this book and a lot of reference to scripture. And you could actually use the Bible if you wanted to and quote scripture as an extra reference, another source. Okay, um, Kamal and Wally each gripped an arm, twisted and bent at the other so that Hassan's hands were pressed to his back as Seth was standing over them, the heel of his snow boots crushing the back of Hassan's neck. 
Okay, so if you were going to crush an enemy, you'd put your foot on his neck. So and this is this is exactly what um, the Taliban did to to the Hazaras. They came and put their foot on the neck of, of that particular um, that particular. How would you describe them? That part of the culture, you know, that caste, if you like, take that word. Okay, but that particular type of caste in their culture. And, and that's what the Taliban did. And then, of course, Russia came along and then did pretty much exactly the same thing. So you can look at the symbolism within that as well. Because this is a key point in this text. The very beginning of the text alludes to it. And everything is leading up to it in the, in the book. And everything after it is the redemption journey towards redemption of it. So it's actually a really key focus point. So if you were looking at something similar to, to this point here, um, a point in the book that you found horrific or something similar, that could be it. You could also find something similar with the, um, the Taliban and something that the Taliban did. There's a number of key points in the book that have something that's quite um, in your face, if you like, that's quite shocking. Okay, um, it could even you could even look at the cancer thing there as well, you know, because cancer is is a dark curse in in any society. So it's like um, Baba may have escaped the Taliban, he may have escaped the Russian invasion, but people don't escape cancer very easily, you know. So it's it, and it's almost like something you could almost put a spirit, spiritual connotation to that. Okay, moving down, further down. Um, thorough and systematic synthesis of relevant ideas. Okay, it's got in here, where the next arrow is. I became bored with the film because it seems didactic, undercurrents of pacifism and a very long engagement are consistent with Junet's anti-war stance and his films, um, Macmax and Delicatessen. Okay, so Where's this, one? this part here in the fourth paragraph. So... What this person is saying is because they know the director is a pacifist and they know a bit about this author because of the other work that he's done, they're saying that while the film may have started off really good, it started to become almost like um, um, like an advertisement, if you like, for, for pacifism. It's, it's become too obvious that they're trying to bang you over the head with this um, pacifism and which is why this student has written that but it's showing a thorough systematic synthesis um, and it's saying that's why they lost interest at this point in the film so the writer of this piece is describing their experience in the reading and how they've come across certain things and how it's affected them and so I would suggest to you for your initial draft that you start to write about your reading experience with a kite runner. What was your first impression when you came to the end and you just read that last page, your first thought in that moment? And then on reflection, what was really good about it? What, re what was it about that book that you thought was different to anything else that you'd read? What has stayed with you? since reading it. What do you think wasn't done very well? And that you think, you kind of lost your audience a bit, mate, that you could have done that better. Um, if it could be improved, how could it be improved? Why do you think the author wrote this book and wrote it the way you think he wrote it? Having said that, has anybody read the preface? This book, I don't think this book has it in it. Have you got it? Um, there's the other books that I've used in other schools. I thought it was in this one. Um, it has a preface. Is it in that one? Yeah, it's in that one. Ah, excellent. Have you got it? 
Yeah, that's the one. Forward to the 10th anniversary edition. And okay, this is, Khaled Hussini actually wrote this. And so, unusual, which is an unusual thing. So, um, if you're looking from an author perspective of the author's purpose, he's literally told you there what it is. It's like a letter to you from the author. This is why I wrote what I wrote, and you know, specifically. So, I mean, read this because this is, you know, if you're looking at author centered reading, it's going to help you align with that. Thanks, Erin. Um, okay, so, so at that point, this one here, I'd be putting another asterisk at that point, and I'd be thinking about, um, for me, when I was reading The Kite Runner. Um, it comes to the end, they're flying kites, he's got Hassan's son with him, his wife who's barren now has a child, um, he's corrected his error by rescuing and risking his life to save this child, so he now has found redemption. It's just too happily ever after for me. You know, we're talking about Afghanistan, war-torn Afghanistan, the invasion of Russia, the Russians and um, the Taliban and the religious um, turmoil and, and you know how females 